Good afternoon, and welcome to the 42nd commencement exercise of Bishop Kelly High School. Bailey Austin, Student Council President, will now give the invocation, followed by the singing of the national anthem by the Bishop Kelly Senior Choir. Let us remember that we are always and everywhere in the holy presence of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Good Samaritan by Tim Hansel. One semester, a seminary professor set up his preaching class in an unusual way. He scheduled his students to preach on the parable of the Good Samaritan, and on the day of the class, he choreographed his experiment so that each student would go, one at a time, from one classroom to another, where he or she would preach a sermon. The professor gave some students 10 minutes to go from one room to the other. To others, he allowed less time, forcing them to rush in order to meet the schedule. Each student had to walk down a certain corridor and pass by a homeless person who was deliberately planted there, obviously in need of some sort of aid. The results were surprising and offered a pow powerful lesson to them. The percentage of those good men and women who stopped to help was extremely low especially for those who are under the pressure of a shorter time period. The tighter the schedule, the fewer were those who stopped to help the indigent man. When the professor revealed his experiment, you can imagine the impact on that class of future spiritual leaders. Rushing to preach a sermon on the Good Samaritan, they had walked past the beggar at the heart of the parable. We must all have eyes to see as well as hearts to help. And we may never, never help at all. God. As this Bishop Kelly graduating class embarks on a new journey of their lives, please help us to have open hearts so that we may act according to your teachings. Do not let us forget our goals as we incur various obstacles throughout our lives. Help us to stay true to ourselves, our family, our friends, and most of all to you by remembering the morals and values that our parents and teachers have instilled in each one of us. Lord, thank you so much for blessing the class of 2002 with so many gifts and talents. Over the past four years, we have grown spiritually, academically, and socially through our education at Bishop Kelly. Please watch over our family members and friends as we begin a new transition in our lives. In your name we pray, amen. Mary, Queen of Peace, pray for us. St. John Baptist de La Salle, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. Outstanding seniors have been selected to speak on behalf of the class of 2002. They are Johanna Hassink and Melissa King. Johanna Hassink.
plodding along in the footsteps of his beloved teacher, Pangloss, lived his life with the utmost optimism, constantly quoting his nutty professor's all-time favorite phrase, Tout est pour le mieux dans les meilleurs des mondes possibles. Basically, that means that everything that happens to us happens for a good reason, because we live in the most perfect universe that has ever existed. Now, while all of us can recognize the statement as untrue, poor, poor Candide was destined to follow the instructions of his teachers throughout the course of the book, while also watching the drowning of a saint-like friend, the dismemberment of war-torn corpses, the gruesome massacre of his adopted family, the death of his dearest love, and even the hanging of his beloved mentor, Pangloss. After a time, Candide came to realize that perhaps his optimistic philosophy was not quite right for him. So he developed his own. Il faut cultiver notre jardin. Literally translated, it means we must cultivate our own garden. But figuratively, it pushes us to take the initiative, review the situation, and form our own opinion. Not to just habitually follow those of others. Now, my father flies on airplanes a lot for his job. He's one of those guys who gets more free tickets from frequent flyer miles in a year than he has kids. And if you know my family, that's saying a lot. But upon returning home from one of his routine visits to Austin last month, he informed me of a very humorous situation. Looking out of the window onto the minute houses below, he noticed the word smile engraved in the grime covering the engine exhaust cone. Obviously, the comedian mechanic decided to bring a little bit of joy into the lives of the weary travelers, as he likewise ensured their safety on the trip. But the all too human implications behind that one word made my father think twice about his flight and about how completely important that mechanic was to the survival of every passenger. This simple anecdote serves to make us wary of the fact that every day we place our lives in the hands of human imperfection. For it naturally follows that because we are human, we are also imperfect. And just as we and the mechanic lack the characteristics of omnipotence and divine perfection, so do the president, the Olympian, the talk show host, the newscaster, the journalist. You may very well be thinking, well, of course no one's perfect, we don't expect them to be. Unfortunately, that is not always the case. So many times the public is found blindly following, like Candide, the opinion of a radio broadcaster or the insight of some famous individual, attributing something extra to those few elite, as if they are somehow endowed with some special vision that we somehow lack. It so often goes unnoticed that, like us, these people are human and capable of leading us astray, as did Pangloss. I'm not saying that we need to always devise some kind of contrary or rebellious opinion just so we won't be following the crowd, but I'm trying to persuade you that sometimes the opinions we find so ultimately pleasing at a given moment are not necessarily valid. There are those in the world, believe it or not, who will intentionally lead us on the wrong path for their own selfish benefit or even with some evil desire in mind. We must find the wisdom within ourselves to distinguish between, between the apparently radical Jesuses and the actually ill-intentioned Jim Joneses. The foundation of this wisdom lies within our morality. Moral wisdom demands that we measure human views with God-given insights, judging them accordingly. And as we distinguish between the good and the bad, let us learn from Candide's experiences. The secret to happiness is not eternal optimism, but rather, the cultivation de notre jardin. Thank you. Thank you, Joanna. Melissa King. Seems so important. 
Our first dates, first driver's license, first bomb test, first time to park in the senior lot legally, and for the guys, that first line of facial hair will always be something special. We will forever look back with fond memories to these years when school activities provided so much enjoyment with our friends and families. But, oh blah dee, oh blah da, life goes on, and we must take our place. As we entered high school four years ago, each of us innocently felt an object in our pockets. We took it out, we found it to be a bright and shiny key, and we were surprised to see our names engraved on its side. When we asked if the key belonged to anyone else, it did not. We placed it in our bedroom. It was our key. Some of us rubbed it as we did our homework and study. Others of us were amused at our reflection in its surface. A few of us put it on our desks and ignored it. But all of us thought about it from time to time. In the last year, an object has slowly come into focus. We have sensed its presence all our lives, but we have never been able to see it. At first sight, the object appeared to be a fence. It was tall, sturdy, and stretched indefinitely into the distance. With our high school days almost at an end, our questions about the fence have been answered. We learned this unique structure was erected by our parents, friends, and families before we were born. It was designed to protect us from an overwhelming world and shelter us from the burdensome weight of reality. It was made to promote stability until we were mature and capable. Occasionally, misfortune has penetrated events, but for the most part, it has done its job. In the past few weeks, each of us has made a vital discovery. When we first saw the end of the fence, the gates that stood before us took our breath away. Its columns rose up into the sky and were topped by stars. Through the gate, we saw the world like we had never seen it before. But as we looked at a reflection in the gate, we saw a small slot beneath the bright and shiny handle. And we knew our key would open the gate to the new world. When we use our keys to open the gate in the months ahead, what essentials should we bring as we enter this real world? And no, not the one on MTV, the one somewhat saner, just a place we've never before experienced. I believe that the most valuable asset has already been packed. I know that everyone here today has been given special talents. Some of our talents are readily usable. Some must be developed with educated refinement. Still others will surface only after certain experiences make them visible. Many of us have the talent to be outstanding parents. Some of us prominent business leaders. A few noted artists, entertainers, and authors. But each of us has a special gift that can make a difference. We can be someone special. We can dare to be rare. But to possess these talents alone is usually not enough. Our talents are bundles of ability that require hard work in order to maximize their potential. We should be willing to let hours and days evolve into months and years in our determined efforts to utilize our gifts to the fullest. We should be dedicated, yet thoughtful. We should be persistent, yet gentle. We should not let the negative words and our actions of others keep us from our calling. Her positive attitude will often be the factor that allows us to succeed where others have failed. While some despise the misfortune of confronting a serious problem, we will seize the opportunity of finding a valuable solution. While some turn back when a barricade crosses the road, we will find an unseen detour and give directions to those that follow. We should make a difference. We should be someone special. We should dare to be rare. To complete our formula for success, only one element is required. Our developed talents need the opportunity to be used. But we must understand that these opportunities will take many shapes and sizes when they are presented to us. But our diverse world, our great country, and developing culture will give each of us the chance to fully utilize our talents if we are properly prepared. We must have hope, be faithful, and at times use a little imagination. For example, I can see Chris Ferguson as the future Secretary of the Navy. Who knew he could swim? I fully expect Bailey Austin to design the living quarters of the first space colony, complete with the latest fashion in space clothing, of course. And I will not act the least bit surprised when Tommy Griffin becomes an executive with General Mills, only after it agrees to put his picture on the front of the Wheaties box. <laughs> We must always remember the opportunities to showcase our talents will surely come, and we must be ready for them. We must make a difference. We must be someone special. We must dare to be rare.
Our current situation reminds me of one of my favorite episodes of The Andy Griffith Show. Opie thoughtfully decides to take the place of a mother bird when she's accidentally killed. He feeds, nurtures, and protects the baby birds on a daily basis until they're mature and ready to be set free. When the day comes, Opie sadly assumes his responsibility of helping the three young birds fly off and make their way in the world. I know that our parents, families, teachers, and friends will understand Opie when he turns to his father and says, the cage sure looks empty. But I am completely confident that our loved ones and future friends will join with others to echo the words of Andy's reply, yeah, but don't the trees seem nice and full? Mr. Whalen, principal of Bishop Hill High School, will now present the salutatorian and valedictorian medals. Mr. Whalen. It is my honor to announce that the salutatorian of the class of 2002 Bishop Kelly High School is Joanna Hessink. Victorian of the class of 2002 at Bishop Kelly High School is Miss Melissa King. <laughs> Brother David, director of Bishop Kelly High School, will now present the Bishop's Medal and the De La Salle Faculty Award. Brother David. Bishop's Medal is awarded each year at graduation to the senior who best exemplifies the following criteria. Contributes to the life and spirit of the school. Shares gifts and talents with other members of the Bishop Kelly community. Represents the ideals and goals of Bishop Kelly. Shows genuine concern for others and exemplifies excellence in academic performance. It is not difficult to see why this year's recipient was chosen, as he so readily exhibits those qualities and characteristics for which this award was designed. Tommy Griffin. is a very conscientious individual who gives 110% to everything in which he participates. He is not interested in just completing a task, but rather is interested in doing the best that he is able. This is evidenced by his achievements academically, <laughs> athletically, and socially. He has been consistently on the academic honor roll and has received an academic letter for these accomplishments. He is a member of the Bishop Kelly chapter of the National Honor Society. Tommy goes about doing what needs to be done in his quiet, unassuming manner. He is quick to congratulate and encourage others while shying away from the spotlight himself. He is a leader who leads by example. He is extremely polite and very respectful of others. When given a task to do, he accomplishes it thoroughly and enthusiastically. He has the ability to make all people feel loved and valued. He sincerely tries to broaden his circle of friends. He is supportive of those who are suffering or those who are in need. He regularly takes the initiative to make a difference in their lives. He never has anything bad to say about anyone. Tommy approaches everything with a pleasant and happy attitude. You cannot meet Tommy Griffin 
and not come away a better person for having known him. Tommy is a young man who consistently puts into practice that faith which he professes. Each Friday morning before school, he comes to the Brothers Chapel for the contemplative prayer sitting. He regularly attends morning mass in the school chapel. He generously shares of himself with others in order to help them better understand who they are. He has been actively involved with the search retreat program as a participant and a leader. Tommy has been one of our peer helpers for the last three years. This is a group of students selected by their peers to minister to other students in time of need. He was instrumental to the success of that group this year. He has contributed over 150 hours of Christian service during his time at Kelly. Athletically, Tommy has participated in our football program, our basketball program, and our baseball program. He has lettered 11 out of 12 possible times, 12 being the maximum number for a person playing three sports for four years. There aren't many athletes today playing three sports. Tommy was an outstanding leader and role model on each of these teams. He is a fierce competitor who has contributed significantly to the success of these programs. He was recognized for his contributions to these teams by being named to the All-District Football Team, the Second Team All-Conference Basketball Team, the First Team All-Conference Baseball Team, and the All-Metro Baseball Team. He has been an active member of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. He has supported all Kelly activities and volunteers to help out whenever and wherever he is needed. He has been an invaluable Comet Ambassador. Some honors and recognitions that have been bestowed upon Tommy are selection as the September board. Each year at graduation, the De La Salle Award is presented to the faculty member who best exemplifies the qualities and characteristics of St. John Baptist de La Salle, founder of the Christian Brothers and patron of all Christian teachers. This award is decided upon by the members of the faculty and staff. Selection for the award is based upon a teacher who witnesses to gospel principles and values, is dedicated to the moral, spiritual, physical, and emotional development of the students, is actively involved with the students, contributes to the educational growth and development of Bishop Kelly High School, and exemplifies a spirit of faith and zeal characterized in the life of St. John Baptist de La Salle. It is not difficult to see why this year's recipient was chosen as she so clearly possesses those qualities and characteristics this award was designed to recognize. Miss Katie Boudreau. <laughs> Miss Katie Boudreau is completing her fourth year at, of teaching at Bishop Kelly High School her alma mater. She is an outstanding theology teacher who is interested in much more than just disseminating information. She makes her introduction to Christian living, her church history, and her media and the good news classes come alive. She strives to bring brain-based learning techniques into her classroom. She wants to make sure that her students are able to understand and incorporate into their lives what is being taught. She works tirelessly both in and out of the classroom helping her students. She always looks for and finds the good and godlike qualities in her students. She is regularly asked to be a confirmation sponsor, an honor and a responsibility that she takes seriously, even after confirmation. She looks upon her teaching as a ministry to young people rather than a job to be completed. 
In addition to her teaching responsibilities, Katie also moderates the Lasallian Youth Group. The Lasallian Youth are a group of students committed to prayer, community, and service. They regularly work with the poor and disadvantaged in the Tulsa area. Katie is always at their side working with them. She is the first to volunteer to chaperone dances or any other student activity. She comes with camera in hand to take pictures to give to the students later. She has been the sponsor of the media club and has served on the campus ministry team. She is invaluable in scripting the live auction production at our annual dinner auction. She supports anything and everything that has to do with Bishop Kelly High School. Katie is a very faith-filled and prayerful woman who is genuinely concerned for others. Her day often begins by attending morning mass in the Dulles South Chapel. She daily puts into practice that faith which she professes. Her Christ-like love, dedication, and commitment have touched every corner of the Kelly community and beyond. She has been actively involved in the Kairos and Surge retreat experiences, sharing her faith with the students in attendance. She is a member of the Signum Fidei Association, a group of Kelly faculty and staff members who meet regularly to share faith and fellowship and who strive to live more consciously the Lasallian ideals and characteristics. During Holy Week this year, Katie attended the Brothers' Retreat in Chicago to speak to the Brothers of the Midwest District about the Signum Fidei Association at Bishop Kelly and the impact that it has had on her life. She is completing the Buttermer Institute, a three-week, three-year program devoted to studying the life and works of St. John Baptist de La Salle and the Christian Brothers. For her Buttermer project, she is producing a video about the Lasallian character of Bishop Kelly High School. She is an excellent role model for the young people confided to her care. St. John Baptist de La Salle said that to touch the hearts of your pupils and to inspire them with the Christian spirit is the greatest miracle that you can perform and one which God expects of you. Katie Boudreaux performs that miracle well. She touches the heart of all with whom she comes in contact. Because of her, we are better people. She goes about sharing herself every day in a quiet and unassuming manner. Her ready smile, her terrific sense of humor, and her easygoing nature attract others to her. She has a tremendous rapport with her students and colleagues alike. She is a person of great character and stamina, having won the respect of all. It is a privilege to work with such a fine individual. She has a great deal to offer and is a tremendous asset to the Kelly community. It is an honor and a privilege for me to present the 2002 Dulles Hour Award to Miss Katie Brown. Anderson. Samuel Calloway Anderson. 
Summer Kathleen Eve Atkins. <laughs> Bailey Reed Austin. <laughs> Andrea Michelle Backer. <laughs> Jewel Marie Bain. <laughs> Andy T. Baker. <laughs> Madeline Turner Barker. Bridget Ann Bassey, Amy Nicole Beecham, Cody Alexander Belcourt, Mary Lauren Bettencourt, Paul Michael Booty, Paul James Bukadakis. Winthrop Tank Bulwer. Yeah. Alicia Danielle Boyce. Yeah. Casey Marie Bradley. Yeah. Michelle Lee Bratzler. Yeah. Megan Omara Bretz. Yeah. Lee Kristen Brindley. Daniel Patrick Brown. <laughs> Kathleen Michelle Brown. <laughs> Lauren Elizabeth Brown. <laughs> Sarah Jane Brown. <laughs> Catherine Tierney Bryce.
So what do you think to this graduation? Pretty fun? Yeah. Pretty exciting? Can you imagine you doing this someday? Can you? They weren't supposed to throw the hands. They weren't? They were probably going to be trapped now.